everybody, welcome to Nerds Talk About the Boys, the show where it should be pretty fucking obvious what we're doing. I'm Hitch, and this is DP, and we're going to talk about the boys. We are excited to be here. DP, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How you doing, I'm buddy? I'm pretty all right. Ready to talk about some of the I'm boys? About, I'm about ready to talk about the boys, because uh, I've been excited to talk about this show for a hot minute, ever since uh, ever since season one ended, or a lot, and I saw season one. We've been talking about coming in and doing a show about the boys. Seemed like it was right in our wheelhouse. Uh, I have to feel like right. energized and ready to do the show. We'll Stoked about, about this the show boy. because it is, I mean, it's so timely. It's so timely, DP, isn't it? I, I, I feel like the more I watch uh, Homelander squish someone's face under his boot, you know, and uh, and then smile at the camera, the more I feel this sort of unctuousness that, uh, that is pervasive in our times. And it, it just feels like uh, right. this is the superhero show. Maybe not the superhero show we need, but definitely the superhero show that we deserve. I <laughs> think that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, so you're taking a little bit of Dark Knight stuff out of there. I, take, you I know. took a lot of that. <laughs> tell you that much. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Everybody. All right, so all right, so we are we are Nerd Cyclopedia. If you didn't know who we are, uh, that, that's our channel, and that's the name of our website, NerdCyclopedia.com. We talk about media stuff, nerd culture, TV. We like TV a lot. We do a show on this uh, Westworld, The Mandalorian. We did an epic, I mean, our best work, I think, so far on Watchmen, on a show called Sam and Scott are watching, uh, yes. watching Watchmen. Uh, yep. And that is the other thing I wanted to address real quick. Definitely go back and check oh, that definitely. out. Oh, definitely. Check our catalog mm-hmm. out if you haven't looked at everything we've done. I mean, we got time here. Uh, you can just pause this and watch the rest. Yep. <laughs> but I want to talk for a second. So uh, this is a new a new APOC for us, a new, a new time, and we're going to be going by our new names. Right, we're gonna we are rebranding ourselves, and that's something that's cool. So I'm excited about that personally. Um, so awesome. we were awesome. Sam and Scott before. We're DP and Hitch now, and I think that's okay. I think it's a good thing. It's gonna unify our branding across the social media, across uh, for me at least uh, Twitch because I do some video game stuff. So we're happy about that, and we decided that that's how it's yep. gonna be. We're the podcast duo officially now that gets along 50 weeks a year. So that's pretty good. Sometimes 49, once well, in a blue 50 minute. weeks, you know. <laughs> and in case you guys didn't know, I'm a hardcore Browns fan, and that's a Steelers fan over on that's that right. way. It's the one thing we <laughs> oh, oh, it's the one way. thing we just agree to disagree about. We don't we don't hash that out. We just let them settle it on the field, which I'm always right. happy to let let them have, right. have that. Um, okay, so so if you're if you're watching this video, if you're listening oh, to this, down the brass tack you, you know what the boys is, and that's a superhero show on Amazon uh, Prime where they do basically. I, I think of this show as like an atheist superhero show is the way I think of this because there everybody an uh, atheist superhero yes. show that is a, a so so it's a godless yes. show in there your are eye. no gods right none <laughs> it's all a farce right because even even Homelander right even Homelander is still a person with these oh, venial venial like motivations and he has the powers of a Zeus yeah he can smite yeah. people with his eyes. Yeah, but the the conflict obviously yeah. is that he yeah. is still but a man, uh, and and there's just or a baby. Or, he has shades of a baby that's in right. him. Right, he's been ripped away from society <laughs> because they couldn't. He's so powerful, he's so strong, he just destroy people. He couldn't leave him leave him out on the schoolyard. Right, he at the beginning of uh, there's a beginning of an episode where he's touring that fake uh, that fake set of his house that he grew up in. And he says, uh, oh, I played, yeah. played shortstop. Mm-hmm. Couldn't show everything, but we did a lot of winning. I, I always thought that was a really uh, a really funny <laughs> funny line where he talks about that. Uh, but they're people. And so I think that the reason I say it's like an atheist superhero story is that I think, uh, you know, that there are there is no higher power here, right? There's science. There's the thing they figured out how to do. It got out of control. But there's no – not really mm-hmm. like magic, so to speak, right? Like there's no right. like Homelander right. isn't really fighting for All the American science. way or freedom. He's fighting for himself. <laughs> I mean, he definitely. Let me ask you. He's selling something. Me, who you know? He gives me these weird Magneto vibes too, right? Where he has this like it's like this combo of how uh, you don't think he, it's like he wants he has this like this view of humanity. It's that they're inferior, and yeah, I. Can- yeah, he definitely he has that. He wants to lord over them, and he has reproduced, yeah. which means he wants to populate the world with his offspring, who he know we know he thinks are superior. 
A little magnetish. Magnetish. Well, uh, you know, Magneto, you know, he has that that sort of balance and everything, you know, um, where he has a conscience. He wants to take care of his right. people. I don't see Homelander wanting to take care of anybody but himself. You he, know? Take, he takes the, he <laughs> but, takes care of a lot. Um, of oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you take care of whole planes oh, and man. everything, you know. Um, so, so, so here's my background as far right. as the boys. I have none. I've never heard of the boys or anything regard, you know, what uh, as far as a property, you know, before all this. You know, before it came out. So when I was just seeing that they that they were um, coming out with a superhero show on Amazon of all places, and seeing these generic, you know, um, want to be Flash and want to be Superman and you know Batman knockoffs and stuff, I'm sitting there thinking this, this is going to be like any other like you know knockoff show where it's it's not super highly intelligent. It's just like you know just trying to play off. Um, you know, suit the uh, playoff mm-hmm. superheroes, you know, known superheroes, main superheroes. So um, when I started watching it and I'm wondering, like, why is this show called The Boys? You know, when it's about superheroes or I thought it was about superheroes. Um, the first scene <laughs> of the first episode um, just just brought me there, you know. So, you know, um, Huey is, you know, with his um girlfriend you know at the time and everything you know they were walking down the street um and he was coming from his you know job and everything um and he's about to uh, if just just refresh my memory he, he's about to tell her he he loves her or something like that and then she ends up stepping out into the street and all of a sudden blood splash you know and you hear this zoom sort of zoomish sound and all of a sudden, and then you see a train on the um you know, on 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 the um, on the um, far end of the screen and everything, and here's where we find out that this is what the flash. If this is in the DC universe, you have the flashes. You know, all the flashes and everything. Here's what will really happen in real life if he actually ran right. into somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and they had me. They had me right there. You know, I was like, wow. I've I've haven't seen anything like that. You know, so from there, it just kept building and building there are, for me. There's this idea, you know, like with The Godfather, right? Or like with a Stanley Kubrick movie, that there's sort of a, like a, a ballet of violence or a sort of a way to, to sh- display the, the hyper real, the hyper violent in a way that's artistic, right? In a way that still has a, like a uh, aesthetic, but that's not what we get here. <laughs> we are right. not treated to some ballet of delights of of the visual world right it's not some whirlwind f- like a kick or fight it's just a splatter it's just as soon as she she was hit basically by a building uh-huh. and and it's very realistic because e equals mc square right he's moving at that fantastic speed at that mass he's gonna clobber her uh some, mm-hmm. some crazy oh stuff. yeah oh yeah crazy oh yeah stuff. uh I, I, th- oh, I think yeah, a lot about yeah, how yeah. this is just a very gritty show i think about that scene with the explosion i think about uh, the mesmer, how <laughs> brutal that scene was. Yeah, and and to me, that's one oh, of the yeah. things about this show that's so great is it it subverts its own tropes by leaning into the realism mm-hmm. right? by saying no 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 this is what right. would actually happen like if Superman actually decided to murder everybody he could pr- pretty much do it <laughs> like there's not you know what I mean I mean really if you're if Superman did not have his superpower of super righteousness, right? He could murder everybody. Yeah, yeah the sense of goodness and everything. And, you know, I mean, that's 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 the. Um, it's, it's it's like they're talking about the things that um, the other side of being a superhero that nobody really wants to talk about. So the book, the comic book, is written by um, um, mm-hmm. Mark Miller. Believe no, Garth, Ennis, uh, Garth yeah. Ennis, right? I'm, I'm about to confuse the two. Yeah, Garth Ennis. So um, yeah, he wrote you know Preacher. And, you know, some other high quality, you know, controversial stuff. But um, this was one where he really subverted, like, you know, the, the, the superhero tropes and everything, you know. So what if Superman was an asshole? You know, what if Superman was a dickhead? You know, um, what would happen if Superman had the chance to save everyone in a plane and decided not to? Because he didn't have to, you know, he wasn't, 
None required. Because because he, he he did he didn't feel it was something necessary to do. You know. Um. So let's let's t- let's talk about that scene, which really really just. It really just shakes me to this day. You know, it was one of the um, um, I, I even read on the Internet. That's that's one of the, 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 the most one of the most disturbing scenes that you can see on TV. Just the way he that that whole scene was planned and handled and everything. And the actor, um, Anthony, Anthony Starr, you know, he actually played on a show called Banshee on um, on Cinemax. You know, really good show. So, guys, check that out. Um, it was real hyper violent. Uh, our, the, the fight scenes were super great. But him. Um, he plays Homelander to a degree where on one end, you know that he he's 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 performing for the cameras. So he's he's a good performer. He he knows how to lead his team and everything. But on the same instance, the guy has a super cold heart. So when we get to that scene, the plane scene, when when him and Maeve are, you know, trying to um um uh, rescue the the um, you know mm-hmm. the hostages and everything right. from that plane, and then he accidentally um, uses his you know heat with it <laughs> to to wreck you know the whole um, control panel and stuff, and then decides from there there's yeah. nothing he can do. You know, Maeve is trying to pre- you know uh, there she she's trying to plead with him, plead with him, at least save these two kids. You know, if anyone you know um, if anyone can save this, that you can say you know you can save these two kids. But he decides, no, are you crazy? You're going to have uh, have them come back and tell everybody exactly what happened? Yeah. No, that's not going to happen, Nate. How cold can a person it's, be? Let me, <laughs> How cold let can me a ask person you this question. Be? This is an interesting philosophical question because I, I, I know exactly the scene. That's an excellent description of the scene. So how would it be different if he never went to the plane? You know what I mean? Because here's an interesting thing about superheroes, and it's it's sort of the Uncle Ben, Spider-Man, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. What makes this scene so affecting right. is that the Homelander's there. He's in the plane with everybody, and he, everybody assumes because he's there that they're going to be saved, right? It's that, that hope, that lift right. that they get that he's there. And then, you know, he right. does, he's not able to save them, right? And he doesn't save anybody because he can't right. let people know that he's, you know, not perfect he can't let people know that he was involved right right so right, here's right. a question for you so he's there and then he decides not to save everybody is that substantively worse than if he would never went in the first place <sighs> not really right i mean there's no 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 there's really no right or wrong answer with that and everything you know it's just like that question of um um, does a tree really fall or can you hear a tree fall if you haven't, you know, if you wasn't in a forest? Well, or is that how it goes? Of, it's a question of, <laughs> it's, it's this, I th- we've talked about it before. I think when we tell, I've talked about the, um, the streetcar experiment or the streetcar thought problem. If you throw the switch, you kill one yeah. person, but yep. save 10. And it's, it's sort of like that, right? Yeah. So Homelander's powers are, are sort of their yeah. own. They bring their own moral imperative with them, right? Because he is sort of bound to intercede in any matter in which in which he could if it reduces human misery right from a moral right. standpoint and so for you and me that means if right. someone like falls down like in the street we're supposed to not let them get hit by cars right like that's the bare minimum society requires of us right but it's different for him so as soon as he right is choosing who to help at all anybody right as soon as he's choosing mm-hmm. to help anybody or not help anybody he's right. making those moral choices the same way he was making them on the plane. Right. What was interesting about the scene is that it made that very obvious that that was the moral choice he was making, right? Is that he was choosing not to intervene that way. Mm-hmm. But he, it could have, he could have accomplished the same thing just by choosing to do something else, like go and shake some little kid's hand instead of doing it. it it's this. Well, well, let's, let's talk about the, like the, the, mm-hmm. the motivation of him even being on that plane because um, um, he was sent out there to to intercede because the um, vault is trying to get the um, superheroes into right. like the military. Right. They're trying right? to take control of the military yeah. <laughs> by, by eliminating the only yeah, thing yeah, that, could possibly, yeah. them, that could possibly stand up to them. Right. Right, right, right. So, so they need like, you know, Congress or, you know, the government's, um, you know, mm-hmm. um, blessing in order to get them into the military. So let's save these people. You know, you'll look good doing that because Vault is a um, is a um, for profit, you know, sales type of um, right. corporation and everything. So they got the superheroes. Let's go out there and get them to 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 do what they can to sway the American public 
to get the government to, um, you know, approve the measures to get them into, like, you know, the military and everything. So Homelander takes it upon himself to do it a different way, <laughs> do it in, in a sense of fear, you know, where where in one element, in one essence that, you know, um, um, he was sent out there to, mm -hmm. to provide hope and see, OK, this is a this is a reason it's a good thing for us to be in the military. At the end of that episode, you see him sort of turning the tables and saying that, OK, you know, we're not going to let this happen ever again. You know, we're not going to let this. This is not something this this is not the American way and everything. We're going to um, take charge. And this is the reason why the government should let us into, you know, the military and everything. So he's feeling that this he's making that decision mm -hmm. in the moment to to uh, to use his, um, I guess, sense of morality or, uh, you know, nonsense of morality to, to make that decision of, um, of to make this type of decision to have them actually, you know, um, um, do what they need to do and accomplish the task has, that they need to do. It has a big Reichstag fire sort of component to it that I think you're hitting on here where he says, basically, if you let us intervene, we could have stopped this. But we know that that isn't true. We know that they couldn't have stopped it because they didn't. Right. And they did try to intervene, right? So so Homelander is, right, is basically right, right. by covering up the fact that he was there, and that's how, what he sacrificed when he didn't take a couple armloads of people out of there. He could have still grabbed a couple armloads of people, uh -huh. done as many trips as he could have done without breaking their necks or whatever, or just juggled them all the way. You know, whatever, right? That right. could have been, you know, Seth Rogen is involved with this. Mm -hmm. It would have been hilarious. <laughs> whatever it is, it would have been better than anything I could have thought, <laughs> think of. Uh, so basically, right, he could have right. done all those things, but he didn't. And in doing so, he left himself this moral opening, and he's able to exploit, right? He's able to exploit the emotions of the people by withholding information from them in a very fascist way. And there's, that's a capital F word in this show because the imagery is quite fascist. The, the idea of mm -hmm. strength is the only thing that can beat strength is a very fascistic idea. The idea that, you know, people are chosen specifically from birth to be great is also a very fascist idea. Um, the idea of having corporations run uh, run the economy and it's privatized the military is also a very fascist yeah. idea. And so the F word is, fascist, is right. really prevalent yeah. here. Yeah. And it's, it's, all, it's all over the place in this show. And I think that it would be a disservice yeah. to the, the people who make it not to talk about it because it's so liminal. They have right. to mean it. I mean, they have to yeah. mean us to say, wow, right. Right. this is an evil thing an evil being wearing the colors of the United States and literally going to foreign places and, and like I said, putting the boot <laughs> to people's faces, right? Well, 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 okay, so it would be your interpretation of what, what we, we may feel that it, the moral thing, you know, is that it's evil and everything, but, you know, in this world and all that, they're, they're looking at Homelander. You're looking at Homelander as, like, you know, the, the, the well, pillar that's the thing is that, you know, he's that the one that, fault, that's a fault. That also is a fascist fault. So this, this hollow yeah, pillar, we, 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 we know. That. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, an interesting, yeah, it's yeah, an interesting yeah. comparison so, yeah, we, we, to how fascism works in the real world. Right. Because these things happen in the real world, except instead <laughs> of one person having the strength to overrule the entire state, it's, it's people that band together and through their willpower overrule the will of the state. It, it's, it's different that way. But Homelander is in very, 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 very much, but, I think, a symbol of the violence inherent in fascism. So it brings to another point. Let's talk about the um, um, the one scene where they were at the the um, the retreat. Oh, the the, the religious retreat. The, um, oh, religious yes. retreat. Okay. Yeah, the religious so, retreat and everything. You no, know, Homelander made. So go ahead. There's this. <laughs> Okay, so here's what they're what they're talking about is obviously this idea that there's uh, people in religions who are insincere, and it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing in America. It's not a new thing in the world. People have been referencing insincere priests for the entire duration of history in every religion. Okay, there's people that there's a uh, cynical end to religion, and people lampoon that always, right? It's always just an evergreen thing. So they're doing that here at the uh, the the prayer retreat 
where they're all talking about their faith and talking right. about their faith. Now, especially for Homelander, we know that's bullshit. <laughs> like, we know that's total shit. <laughs> we I mean, know he's just like a bunch I mean, of pumping look, I, so I, I was things. confirmed, so I feel like I can be somewhat of an authority on this. I, I did some Bible reading in my time here, DP. I do not remember thou shalt, okay. thou shalt use thine heat vision to slash thine enemies in twain. I don't remember that being the 15th commandment or anything. I don't know that Jesus would be okay with abusing your power disparity to smash the innocent. Uh, that being said, so there is this fascism wants to cloak itself in morality. It wants to cloak itself in the idea right. of patriotism. And, and that is this veneer, this false veneer that's applied right. to everything. And this is a pillar of, of these sorts of, of uh, political movements where they, will, they do not want to be questioned. We can't question the patriotism right. of this group because look right. at them. Right. We can't question the, uh, the true aims of this group because look at how tied into religion they are. Look how tied into morality they are. So they wear right. it like a shield right. to protect right. Right. themselves. It's like a, like a turtle shell, right? Or like a horseshoe mm -hmm. crab shell because what's underneath yeah. is disgusting. And, 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 and have you ever and, turned and, a horseshoe crab over, Sam? Right. And the, DP, have you ever done that? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's gross. Not at all, not at all. But you get a, you get enough people to mm -hmm. back your you know um, uh, sense of fascistness and everything. And you can um, convince enough then people then you that feel you're legit, you can do it. But that's the challenge, yes. right? Because yes. you're not. Yes. Because you can't be. Right. Because you know that you know that you're a hollow pillar. You know that you're a a clang and gong to take the actual. Uh, James, you know, yeah. James version of it. But because, but but we see in Homelander, he cares no for he cares about nobody right. but himself. That he he al he already knows who he is. Um, as far as like you know his sense of self and everything, we see how that manifests itself anytime he has his um, relationship. You know, talks mm -hmm. with the boss. Um, I'm forgetting her name. Um, Elizabeth Shue, yes. Madeline Stillwell. So she's like the um, the the chairman, uh, the vice president of Vault International, but she has this crazy sexual, you know, baby, you know, relationship with Homelander, and that's his weakness, you know, um, at least for like the the first nine ep uh, first seven episodes. I wonder how much of that's legit. How much um, of that do you think is legit from Homelander, and how much of that is you think manipulating her to think she's in charge? Well, if it is a thing with Homelander being, you know, manip uh, manipulative, it's a hell of a, um, it's a hell of a con on his end, you know, because for the whole series, I'm thinking that she has more control over him than mm -hmm. he has over her. So if that was the the twist that we were so supposed to take upon, um, you know, what happened at the very, you know, last episode, then yeah, that's a hell of a con for him. I don't you know. know. I don't know if he just um, snapped. Which makes it seem like he, well, he could have just snapped. Well, makes it seem like he's either smarter. Than, than what he lays out to be, or like you said, he may have just snap. But just going back to um, you know, his um sense of need needing to be wanted, needing to be um, you know, worship, needing to be seen. We see this both with Stillwell and also with Maeve, because Maeve also calms mm -hmm. him down when she's talking to um talking to the the girl, the um I can't even think of her name right now. Huey's girlfriend. She's um, yeah, Star. Yeah, Starlight. So he he's talking to Starlight because um, we find out or he finds out that she she betrayed him. She betrayed the you know the group um with talking with Huey and that she had a relationship with Huey and everything. So the group finds out or Homelander finds out. That the group, the uh, the boys, you know, um, were um, trying to infiltrate like the um, the seven, and you know, um, Starlight was like sort of like a part of that, and she Starlight didn't really know, so we see Homelander sort of attacking her, sort of like you know going um, going at her real hard and everything to the point where he sort of sort of like threatening her life. Then Maeve has to stop, it, you know, come in mm -hmm. to stop that, you know. So we see another woman having a little bit of control over him as well. So and she, and he's so we see a little bit of weakness in um, on his end when it comes to these two women because we see because because we also see him saying um you know he say um uh, that that's my better half so we assume that she he does have a some sort of relationship yeah. with Maeve 
But we also see that same type of relationship going on with um, Stillwell. It turns out, and like turns I said, you know, when you raise you know, a child in a lab, it stunts them emotionally. <laughs> and we've seen that here. I, I was watching Umbrella. I watched Umbrella Academy recently. Have you watched Umbrella Academy, DP? I watched a couple episodes. I, a couple episodes. Um, I need to, to go back because I'm here in the second it's season. It's a good it's show. Really good. I would highly recommend it. We might really like it. We might end up. This is one. That's one of those ones we might catch up to you later. But one of the things about that show that I like is that okay. all, they basically that's all the kids in that show, right? They're raised in a lab by this monster scientist, and they're all just like messed up. Right. And I think that that's. That's great to show right. that sort of, you know, that those things can have an impact. Even if you're as strong as Homelander, even if you are in charge right. and basically, you know, you're on the precipice of being relied on to be the entire military force of the only superpower in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's going to put you into a position <laughs> where you have as much political, you would have as much political weight as the entire United States military structure. And that, that's a heck of a lot. I mean, just even from the three million people, the three million votes associated with—I mean, that's a lot of weight. I mean, and that's yeah. just before you—you you yeah. think to yourself, well, if I defy him, he can fly into my house and kick me through the wheel, like kick me through the wall, right? <laughs> it is so. Right. So right, the right. end game. Well, one wonders what the end game is for Homelander because if you know, we know the people that are involved in this show, and we know um, the creative team, so we know they're not going to just be super like. We know they're not going to be super vanilla. We, pro- we probably aren't going to get the whole, like, uh, was it, there's a treehouse of horror where Ned Flanders is the dictator, right? And they have to go to re-nedification. You know what I mean? Right. We probably won't get something like that. Right. Um, so what do you think, what is Homelander's endgame? Like, what does he want more than anything? Um, I'm, I'm, it's, it's to, to rule the world. You know, um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 to be a dictator, I, I have, I have no idea. I mean, the only, the only real twist we see is when he mm-hmm. found out about the, the right. baby, you know, his kid that, um, the, um, you know, he ended up getting the butcher's girlfriend, mm-hmm. Billy Butcher, you know, pregnant and everything. And him finding out that he had a, um, right. a child, you know, that ended up getting, um, miscarried or what have you. And then, um, we found out that was a lie, <laughs> but um, with with Homelander, that's where I'm seeing this going. I don't think the show is going to go that route, but I'm seeing that this type of character really has a, not not a lot of redeeming qualities about him. I don't see him turning into actual good guy. Just you know, um, you know, seeing like the brighter side of things, and you know, just going off and not because that's not who his yeah. character is. That's not how he started out with. And I don't expect that's how it's going to end with him. But we're, we're talking a that's lot true. about Homelander. So it's a lot of other characters on this show. <laughs> because obviously it seems like we're excited about Homelander. He is like the... Um, he's the know, twist. The, he's the, the trophy. The, the he's shiny the object of the right? show. He's the, he's the inversion. So he's the thing that's the yeah. most interesting. Yeah. Right? Let's, let's talk a yeah. little bit about where we left let, uh, let, where we left everybody. Let, let's, let's, talk a little, let's talk a little bit about the okay. protagonist, okay. per se, and Billy Butcher. Butcher. <laughs> okay, so... Yo, and, and how he feels about, um, you so, know, Homelander and, you know, so him. So how do you uh, resolve that white hot hate when the reason, I mean, he hates him for a reason <laughs> that's not true. He, he, obviously, he wasn't responsible for his wife's death. She's not dead. So mm-hmm. that's a he- that's probably a heck of mm-hmm. a thing to deal with. Although I would imagine impregnating the wife, probably not a, you know, probably not a super best friend in the future situation anyway. Uh that's a lot of all. rage to all of a sudden just kind of run into a wall on. That's going to be, I mean, that's going to be quite a drop off here for him. That sort of obsession for years and years and years and finally getting to the finish line. And not only, I mean, this is, yeah. this is, we yeah. talked about Homelander for 25 minutes, but he didn't just not let him die. He saved his life and said, you right. can thank me later. And then, right. <laughs> and then showed him right. his wife was alive. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's literally spit in his face. I can't wait to see what the reaction Ooh. is ne- next week when when we get these first three episodes. But literally, it's like no, knowing you, and you know, you know, your enemy doesn't have any superpowers, but you know, you hold this big thing that he cares so much about mm-hmm. over him that you know the um, it would not satisfy you just to kill him, just to kill him dead and eliminate the possible threat that he may hold. But to to spit in his face and show him that you actually um, that he actually is in possession right. of your wife, 
um girlfriend of Wabby. Um and um um you made um uh, he made a baby. Yeah, he, he made a he got to say has a they have a kid together and everything. So that's the that's the ultimate like <laughs> fuck you, you know, um to 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 someone who has a um a mm-hmm. hard on, you know, for um, trying to to get homeland or holding all this stuff up and anger and everything over the years to 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 get you know to get this guy. I mean, Butcher he handles it with sarcasm and I love his sense of humor throughout like the whole series with mm-hmm. dealing with Huey, especially dealing with um his the other boys. <laughs> Uh, we got like uh, the the Frenchie and um, uh, uh, yeah. Marvin, yeah, Marvin. You know, um, where we we see how you know he deals with them and everything, and I, I just love like their whole interplay, and I, I love how um, you know Marvin and Frenchie they have like a history, but <laughs> one 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 um, but but um, um, Frenchie and um, Marvin had the um, the exchange in the mall. Um, in a mall airport, it looks like an airport or mall, you know, scenario. And they were fighting, and you know, uh, Marvin goes back and tells Frenchie, "Okay, well, you, 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 you mess up all the time and everything. So if you do this again, it's going to just, you know, fuck us mm-hmm. all up and everything." So they go and um, I'm about to split apart, and then Butcher comes back in and says, "Remember the Spice Girls, you know?" <laughs> he did, and this is set up for something later and everything. He's talking about remember the Spice Girls. And both of them are talking about what the hell are you talk about the Spice Girls in the middle of all this and everything. You know, what, what's so going on with the Spice Girls? And then he goes through each Spice Girl. And this is the brilliance of this show. He goes through each Spice Girl and tells him what the Spice Girl means to, um, you know, what, what their, their quality is and everything by themselves and stuff. But what he's basically trying to say, they're nothing to, you know, nothing apart. But when they come together, they're the fucking <laughs> Spice Girls. You know, they were like a uh, they're they're like a worldwide phenomenon, but they're not shit by right. themselves and everything. So this is the thing that, you know, brings them, you know, back together when they were about to like split apart. And it sets up uh, another, you know, thing for later and stuff when um when when Frenchie is about to uh, da 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 he's 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 about to um um try to get Kamiko to come, you know, to their mm-hmm. side and everything. And Butcher is like, he's she she's nothing. You know, why? Why even go after her? And then Frenchie's like, OK, well, remember the Spice Girl. So basically, she's basically saying that um, right. she's one of us, you know, so, you know, let's bring her along. But this is this is I, I love like the interplay between all of them. This is what makes them the boys. This is why I first realized that, OK, this is the boys. This yeah. is the real show. The, the superheroes are like the side story to what their relationship is as far as like the boys. You gotta love the interplay. I like that. I like that they have their own sort of personality traits. They're not trusting. They're not omnipotent. They don't do things perfect, and they get lucky a lot. Like even even right. I was watching the finale, right. and when he or the finale, and when when he is a uh, like the first time he shoots that gun, he hits shoots the guy in the head, and then yells, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." <laughs> you know what I mean? They just get lucky over and over. Like Homelander <laughs> comes and finds them and doesn't find. You know what I mean? Translucent. You know what I mean? Just right. jumps in. And he's like, "Hey, what's going on?" And they get away with it. So they have like there's this element of yeah, luck yeah. and pluck, and you know that they're you know they have no advantages whatsoever, like none, no advantages whatsoever. Like as, right. as soon as they are even identified, they are all dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, that yeah, sort of determination yeah, yeah. you only see in you only see it in the uh, in like the French Resistance from World War Two. You know what I mean? So I gotta love you gotta love that sort of dedication of getting the job done for sure. Uh, really cool. Well, I mean, all, all Billy wants to do is just get the boys back together. So, you know, they're all split apart, you know, um, at the beginning of the series and stuff. And one by one, he, you know, convinces them to come back. They don't want to come back, you know, from whatever they tried to do before. Um, but he eventually gets them back together. So each character has its little depth, you know. Um, you know, uh, Marvin, he gets it to a point where he keeps telling his wife, that I'm not involved with these cats anymore. I'm just doing my job, you know, at the 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 the, the boys facility or um, you know, men's facility helping, you know, other men out and everything. Um that's just my job. I'm not back with <laughs> Billy, you know. And then he, he but, but he 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 just gets pulled back in because that's who he is, you know. And then towards the the end of the um end of the um back half of the episodes, you know, he ends up getting his wife in danger and they end up getting their families in trouble. Because the um, the seven have found out exactly who they are, you know, so now they're all in trouble, 
you know. So this gives like that particular character depth because he we, we, we see his family. We get we sort of draw get drawn into his character and his family to, to have some sort of sympathy for his situation. Same way with Huey, with his dad, you know, a train, you know, gets him um, um, holds him hostage for a minute um, and. You know, he we has to 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 sort of bait like a, the the um what they call the the blue stuff that he uh, likes so much. Um, is that what it's called? Yeah, 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 yeah. Compound V, compound V. You know, so he dangles that in front of him just so he doesn't you know hurt his dad and everything. And the 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 um A train, he's something else. <laughs> he has so much hubris yeah. and everything. He's so glad he's fast and stuff. Um, it's, it, it, and I love the way they, they, you know, portray him as like this sort of like a burnt yeah. out track star, you know, who just keeps taking drugs just to keep it going and everything. And he just wants to be the fastest, you know, um, but he has to do all this stuff just to, to maintain his celebrity. You know, the, the seven are the celebrities, the boys are the ones that are trying to take down the, um, the, 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 mm. the, the lie that they present. I, I think it's, uh, the boys use of creative violence is also one of the coolest things the way they kill translucent by blowing him up yeah. from the inside and like they have to hide him under the sea and like they, they go to these extremes because they know they have to and it still doesn't work i mean like and you right. know and you know butcher's gonna get blamed for that murder you know what i mean at the end he's gonna get blamed for that because why you know he just blew her up that's all they're gonna find right is maybe him and right. who knows about the baby right. Right. i mean maybe yeah. the baby's still no. yeah 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 oh so, oh, one of my favorite scenes when when um when they him and um it was Billy and and Mar Mar Marvin they were going into like the hospital and they were about to find out that all these babies were um you know they had compound V in them you know that they were using these babies to, to to you know they were injecting compound V into the babies and then um you know a bunch of bad guys came and tried to shoot them and stuff and then Billy takes one of the babies. <laughs> And starts using his the baby powers <laughs> to take out the um. So, so you're, you're 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 talking about the way they use like yeah. violence and stuff that had me dying, man. That had me rolling. So so the show has like it very it's very aware of itself and it has a great yeah. sense of humor combined with some serious elements that are going on that they're some talking really cool about. Stuff. Uh, we're excited about it. I'm excited to see Giancarlo Esposito. You know, whenever he shows up, that oh, guy, yeah. like, that villain is oh, going to be awesome. Hey. Like whenever he's in the show. Oh. Hey, uh, you know, I'm super excited I mean, about that. We got we got some Breaking Bad stuff. We got some Mandalorian stuff mm -hmm. that he was in. You know, anytime I'll he shows him up, it's I'll about follow to him be around on. to a TV show for sure. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? I definitely would. There we um, go. that's about. I think that's a good a good preview. A little bit of appetite wedding okay. for everybody yeah. out there yeah. to, to tell them what we're going to talk about as we nerds talk about the boys, the Amazon show. Uh, we're glad you joined us today. Yeah, we will be. Um, yeah, we'll be recapping these, these episodes. So the first, the way they're planning it out, the, um, last year they just dropped them all at once. Amazon dropped the um, whole season all at one time, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool, you know, the Netflix type of way. This season, which is kind of sweet to me, is that they're dropping the first three episodes on September the 4th. And then each week they're going to, um, you know, do the rest of the eight episodes, you know, for the rest of the season. So this gives us a really great chance to speak mm -hmm. with you guys and converse and it really actually really build up anticipation for the next episode each week. So we're going to be here after the first three episodes air to talk live again, you know, about like what we've seen. And then we're going to come back live again yep, each sure. week. And we're excited about it to join you here for, uh, for the boys. Uh, a real, uh, as you can tell, I'm into weird. I think about things in a weird way. And uh, I like this. I like a show like this that works on a lot of different levels and has a lot of different layers. And look, if all you want to see is someone's brains get squashed out, we got that for you too. This is pretty fucking great. All right. Well, <laughs> that's about all we got for you today. Oh, oh before yeah. before we go, and I know I messed up earlier, <laughs> guys. So you know, just just call me out. Hashtag hate. Eight DP Brown, you see at Dog Pound Brown at the bottom and everything. <laughs> so basically, make sure that you guys go to nerdcyclopedia.com um, if you want to check out our website. Make sure that you are emailing us at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Also, we are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at nerdcyclopedia. And you can see all right. So you see it right below. here on the screen. You can see all of our little tags there. You can find mm -hmm. us on many different 
All our little tags are Many right there. Many of the medias. Okay. And make sure that you guys are subscribing to our podcast. We're all over Apple. That's what I was trying to say earlier. We're trying to. Um, we're we're all over Apple Podcasts. <laughs> we're all over on um, Google yep. um, Podcast, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast, Spotify. We are That's there right. as well. And also, um, we're on YouTube. Obviously, you know you're watching here. So make sure you click on that subscribe. Tell your friends and share us, and click on that notification. So whenever you hear. Um, so whenever we are, you know, going live, you are going to um, get That's that right. notification. You can join us or not. It's a beautiful you know, thing. Whatever. We don't care. We're not that. We're not that <laughs> thirsty. But you should join us. Uh, that's right. That's episode one of Nerds Talk About the Boys, and uh, I guess we'll leave it there. DP. All right. See you soon. All right, Hitch. Nerds Talk About the Boys is a production of Nerd Cyclopedia Transcontinental Podcast. Nerd Cyclopedia.